Good evening, everyone. My name is Tony Penny, and I have the honor of being the Chief Learning Officer here at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation and Institute. And on behalf of my colleagues who, through our work, do our utmost to honor the legacy of President and Mrs. Reagan, I welcome each and every one of you to the Reagan Library here tonight. And I want to thank you for joining us on this special occasion. So as we do at each and every one of our events, we like to honor our men and women in uniform by beginning with the Pledge of Allegiance. So please rise and join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Please be seated. So as you just saw in a number of videos, our education mission here at the foundation is to cultivate the next generation of citizen leaders. We do that by offering a variety of leadership programs from students ranging from elementary school all the way up through college. In fact, I want to do a little test here. I want to see how many of you have been involved in our programs in one way or the other. So uh, I'm going to name a couple of our programs here. And if you've been involved in that program or one way or another, just stand up. I want to see how many of you have already been involved with us. So if you've ever visited on a field trip, if you've been here on a field trip, please stand up. Oh, there we go. Look at this. This is my favorite part. We love when people come visit us. Uh, if you've ever seen a speaker here, just remain standing, or if you want to raise an arm, maybe add to. If anybody's seen a speaker here, there we go. Um, if you've been a part of our summer leadership program, if you've been a part of our summer leadership program, fantastic. Look at all these familiar faces. Uh, if you've been to either one of our leadership conferences or one of our youth town halls, a couple people, there we go. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we, we welcome each and every one of our, our program alums back. Um, those of you who are in this room represent the very finest citizen leaders that Ventura County has to offer. By virtue of your invitation tonight, you know that you're an excellent scholar and someone whose leadership on campus and in your community has been extremely impactful. So whether this is your first visit tonight or you think of the museum as your home for civic engagement, we welcome you to the Reagan Education family. Now here's the thing about the Reagan Education family. Once you're a part of it, you do not get to leave. Uh, we want you to come back over and over again. We'd love to have you come back as a visitor. In fact, uh, every one of you, look, if you look in your program tonight, every one of you is going to get a free membership to the museum for the next year. And Joanne will tell you a little bit more about that later. Uh, so we want you to come back as a visitor. Uh, we want to have you come back as an intern. In fact, uh, every one of our interns this summer is an alum of one of our programs. Uh, we'd also love to have you come visit us in Washington, DC, the video you just saw. And that's why we're doing something a little special tonight. So you saw the video about our newest education initiative in Washington, DC. It's only about a year old. And Janet Tran, who uh, directs the program, is kind of standing over there. She hates when I do this. But Janet uh, directs that program. And it's a really great program. Uh, it's a program that aims to support the best and brightest young leaders in the country. Uh, and that's you. So we're here tonight to award $50,000 in scholarships to 13 of you. But we want to be sure that no one leaves empty handed. So here's what I'm going to do. In recognition of your status as Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation Scholars Program Semifinalist, we are going to offer each and every one of you, at some point during the next four years, a scholarship of no less than $3,000 to participate in that program in Washington, DC. So if you have any inclination on going to Washington, DC, we will front you the first $3,000. <laughs> So uh, later this week, you are going to get an email from someone on our team who's going to tell you about how we plan to administer that. Um, but we're excited to be able to offer that to each and every one of you here tonight. Uh, but tonight, we're going to celebrate, that's our newest program. This is one of our oldest programs in education. In fact, the Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation Scholars Program has been honoring and rewarding outstanding and civically engaged student leaders here in Ventura County since 2000. Uh, and in that time, we've awarded more than $600,000 to Ventura County students. Recipients of tonight's awards demonstrate the leadership, character, communication skills, academic achievement, and commitment to Ventura County that would have made our 40th president very proud. Ronald Reagan's leadership was legendary. And in being recognized tonight, you honor this legacy. So this year, we received more than 180 eligible applicants from 27 different high schools in Ventura County. And we are pleased to recognize you as part of an elite group of 100 semifinalists. So I congratulate each and every one of you on your achievements, and it's an honor to recognize your efforts in the name of President Reagan. 
So to continue with our program, I am pleased to introduce an alumnus of the Reagan administration who was President Reagan's chief of staff during the last 10 years of his life and served as Mrs. Reagan's spokeswoman up until her passing. Today, she serves as our chief administrative officer and she's the heart and soul of our organization when it comes to a connection with the president. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Miss Joanne Drake. Thank you, Tony. It's great to see all of you here this evening. As we celebrate the history and legacy of President Reagan, we know that if he were here today, and I feel that he is, he would be looking toward the future, your future. And he would look towards that future with the utmost optimism and confidence in our country. Based on the qualifications that all of the students put forward for the Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation Scholars Program, we agree at the foundation that the days ahead will in fact be bright. Year after year, my colleagues on the selection committee are impressed with the character and tenacity of Ventura County's best and brightest. This year's class is certainly no exception. Your leadership and service is truly inspiring. And it is obvious from, reaching your, from reading your applications and watching your videos that you all share an amazing level of drive and determination. You share these qualities with our special keynote speaker this evening. A competitive gymnast since she was a young girl, Ariana Berlin was in a devastating car accident with her mother when she was only 14 years old. With her dreams of a successful gymnastics career dimming, Ariana turned to hip hop dancing. But her unparalleled work ethic, her drive, and determination ultimately led her back to gymnastics, where she became a four-time All-American athlete at the University of California, Los Angeles. Her college stats say that she hit 175 of her 182 career routines, 96% without a fall. Think about that. I just fall getting up and down the stairs. Her inspiring story was made into a movie called Full Out, the Ariana Berlin movie, in which she served as the actual stunt double herself and sort of unheard of in the world of gymnastics, went back to the gym at 26 years of age and trained as hard as she had during her competitive days. Since then, she has become a full-fledged actress, producer, and stunt double for many popular movies and shows. Ladies and gentlemen, we are privileged to be able to hear from the movie inspiration herself, please join me in welcoming Ariana Berlin. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. I actually have a really cute story before I get started. So I was at work today, I work at Fox Sports, I'm a producer, and I was going into the elevator and my coworker hopped in with me and he said, whoa, you, you look dressed up today, we're, what's going on? And I said, oh, I actually have a speaking engagement. And he goes, oh, where at? And I told him, and he said, wow, I actually was a recipient of the Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation Scholars Award. And he said, that was the best, verbatim, that was the best day of my life. So that warmed me and I'm so honored and excited to be here, thank you so much. My name's Ariana Berlin, and even though I'm standing in front of you right now, I shouldn't be. I, I, was, I grew up in San Diego, and looking back at my earliest memories, I can remember a house, like a lot of other houses, on a street, like a lot of other streets, with a yard, like a lot of other yards. I was a regular kid from a regular family, but with one big exception. I had a ton of energy, like way too much energy. I could never sit still. I was always running around, climbing on things. Nobody could stop me. So my poor parents, exhausted, asked themselves, what do we do with her? The answer, put her in the gym. I was three when I fell in love with gymnastics, jumping, running into foam pits, across trampolines, off the balance beam. I mean, who wouldn't love a sport like this? And for the first couple years, it was just for fun. But once I realized I was getting pretty good and at a level I was ready to compete at, it became more than just something my parents put me in to tire me out. It became the beginning of my dream to become an Olympian. 
In gymnastics, there are different levels of competition. It's different now, but when I was a kid, everyone started at level five, which is the first level. As you get better and more experience, you move up until you get to level 10, and then after level 10 is the elite level, which is also the Olympic level. So at age five, I started at the bottom, level five. By the time I was eight, I was in the level eight now. That's only three levels away from the Olympic level. At that point, I started setting goals for myself. Yes, I was an eight-year-old setting goals for myself. So I sat my parents down and we talked. We decided that if I wanted to reach my next set of goals, moving up to level nine, 10, and eventually elite, I would have to move to a more competitive gym and make some more sacrifices. This meant switching to a better gym in Orange County, which meant my mom would drive me an hour and a half each way, six days a week for practice. It was a massive sacrifice all around, but you didn't have to ask me twice. And it was working. Four years later, by the time I was 12, I had made it to level nine. I was the level nine national champion, and then I made it to level 10. I was now one level away from Olympic level. So again, I sat my parents down, and we decided that in order to make it to the elite level in time for the 20, 2004 Olympics in Greece, we had to step up the training, which meant more sacrifice. We switched gyms again from Orange County to Temecula to one that had one of the most successful elite programs in producing the top gymnasts in the country. Driving to Temecula instead of Orange County, you know, saved my mom an hour of driving, but now I was practicing twice a day, six days a week from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m., and then again from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. That's eight hours a day in a gym. I left school, I left my friends, and I started homeschooling. I would go to morning practice, and then I would go to a bookstore, do my homework, go back to practice, and then finish my homework on the long drive back at night. This was my routine six days a week, every week for two years. That's what it took to be the best. The 14-year-old 14, the 14 me was in the eighth grade, still homeschooling, and about to make the elite level. The Olympics were less than three years away, and my dream was becoming a reality. All the sacrifices, all the hard work were paying off. I remember it was Thanksgiving. I had the weekend off, which was rare. My mom thought it would be fun to go shopping back in Orange County because we hadn't been back there since I'd switched gyms. We got on the freeway and started driving to Fashion Island, but to be honest, I don't even remember that. Five days later, I woke up in a hospital. I had been in a coma. My dad by my side and no memory of anything that had happened. I had broken both of my legs, my wrist, my collarbone, two ribs. They had done an emergency operation and put a titanium rod in my femur. I had casts from my hips to my ankles. Both of my lungs had collapsed and I had these big chest tubes coming out of both sides. I also had pancreatitis, which meant I couldn't eat for the month I was in the hospital and I was fed through an IV. My mom broke her leg and also had an emergency operation. She had a titanium plate put in her leg. She shattered her scapula, broke some ribs and had some minor brain trauma. So, what happened? We'll never know for sure, but witnesses said that another car who was speeding behind ours hit us from behind and we rolled five or six times. When the first responders got to the scene, they found me hanging out of the car window with the seatbelt wrapped around my neck holding me inside. It was the one thing that kept me from being ejected from the car. So wear your seatbelts. And the driver of the other car, he had no insurance, a suspended license, and tried to hit and run, but his car broke down further up the freeway. When we were well enough, my dad and brother took us home from the hospital, and I started what I thought was gonna be a quick road to recovery. I remember having another surgery on my left knee and the doctor telling me I would need more surgeries in the near future. No problem, I thought, there was still time to make the Olympics. That's when he told me I'd never be able to do gymnastics again. Like, like you saw the doctor in a full out. In his expert opinion, my body couldn't handle the stress. It was over. That was a rough day for me. It's something nobody with a journey, nobody on a journey with a dream ever wants to hear. That 
the journey and the dream are over. I cried for the first time in a long time, and as reality sank in, I felt depressed, I felt empty, I felt angry. 10 years of sacrifice, of training, of chasing a dream, and this is how it was ending, it was a terrible feeling. Now, for some people, that would have been the end of the story, but I'm not some people. I spent a year in physical therapy going from a wheelchair to a walker to crutches to finally being able to walk again. I still had a metal rod in my leg, which caused me a lot of pain any time I did simple gymnastics moves. So it slowly became reality that whether I liked it or not, I wasn't a gymnast anymore. But, but I wasn't gonna sit on the sidelines for the rest of my life, no matter what the doctors or the experts said. That's not who I am and that's not who you should be. I was going to find some way to express myself, so I ended up in dance. I was 15 and in a hip hop dance troupe. It was low impact and didn't put stress on my body the way gymnastics did. I started taking classes five days a week and I was, you know, getting pretty good. Because of all those years of flipping and spinning in gymnastics, I was a natural break dancer. So I became a B-girl. Have you guys heard of that term, B-girl? No. It means breakdancing girl and a B-boy, which maybe some of you have heard, is a breakdancing boy. I loved it because it allowed me to combine my two passions, gymnastics and dance. As a troupe, we performed across the country and in Europe and Asia. We also performed every summer at SeaWorld, which is where I first met Valerie Condos Field, the UCLA women's gymnastics head coach. Everybody calls her Ms. Val, so I called her Ms. Val. She directed the show my dance troupe and some gymnasts were in every summer. When I had met her, she had heard my story already of this top little gymnast who was in this career-ending car accident. We had an instant connection. Watching the gymnastics part of the show made me realize how much I really missed the sport. And so I started thinking, what if I try to come back? It had been two years since the accident. I had access to the head coach of a number one college program in the country in my ultimate dream university. And Ms. Val and I were getting really close. I didn't want to have any regrets, and I figured I had nothing to lose, so I said, why not? On Ms. Val's last night at SeaWorld, I went up to her and said, it's been my dream to be coached by you and to be a UCLA gymnast. I don't know what I'm capable of, but I will go back to gym tomorrow if you'll let me be a part of your program. For a 16-year-old to approach the number one coach in the country, you know, it, it took some guts. She said she had been watching me all summer and noticed how hard I'd been working, my dedication, my work ethic, and that she loved to have me on the team, but I would have to earn my spot just like everybody else. That week, I got back in the gym for the first time in two years and started to train. It turns out, Ms. Val and I had some very different ideas of what me being on the team meant. She didn't think I could physically compete with all my injuries. Her idea was that she wanted me there as kind of inspiration, moral support, like a cheerleader. She thought that because of my break dancing, I could help with the floor routines and, you know, if the stakes weren't too high, maybe I'd get a little action. Do I even have to tell you that that is not what I had in mind? My plan was to compete, and not just to compete, but to start and to win. A lot of people said it couldn't be done, but a year later, after working like crazy, it did. I earned a spot on the team. I was a gymnast again and a Bruin. When that first season started my freshman year, I was still in a tremendous amount of pain and could only physically train one third of the amount my teammates did. So even the smallest accomplishments were a gift. I did a lot of mental exercises. So I would walk up in front of every apparatus, close my eyes and do visualizations of getting tens and tens and tens. I was on the bench at the beginning but slowly I got to start on beam, and then vault, and then bars. And by the middle of my first season, I was starting on every event. By the end of, by the, end of the season, the Pac-10 named me freshman of the year, and UCLA came knocking too. They gave me a full scholarship. My second year at UCLA, I was getting better and stronger and began trying more difficult skills. My training was still limited though compared to the other girls because I was in so much pain. Remember that rod that the doctors put in my femur? Yeah, it was still there. So Ms. Fallon and I decided it needed to go. And after a five-hour 
brutal surgery, the rod and the pain were gone. My last years at UCLA read like a fairy tale. By the time I graduated, I was an All-American. I finished fourth in the nation, and we won a national championship. Here's the ring to prove it. That was in 2010. Thank you. So a few years ago, I get a call from a Hollywood producer, Jeff Deverett, saying, hey, I want to make a movie about your life. Trust me, when you get a call like that, you don't think it's real. You think someone's messing with you. But he wasn't, and it was real. He had lined up Jennifer Beals of Flashdance to play Miss Val and Anna Golia from the teen show Degrassi to play me. Not only did I make a cameo as the assistant coach, but I also had the opportunity to be a stunt double for myself, which was really fun. The film, as you saw, is called Full Out, and we shot in Toronto about two years ago. And now it's on Netflix and airing all over the world. There are many takeaways from my journey, and I'll share three of them with you. First, never be afraid to ask for help in life, and never be afraid to give others advice when asked. Nothing difficult in life is ever achieved alone. And you'll need the support wherever you can get it. Whether it's overcoming an injury, or a difficult class, or college applications, or even something as small as getting through a rough day, we all need help. I had my parents, my brothers, my friends, my teachers, my teammates, my coaches, and I would not be where I am today without them. So who do you have? Who can you turn to? Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's your mom or dad. Maybe it's a mentor. Maybe it's a complete stranger. Don't be afraid to ask. And when they do help you, say thank you. Second, overcoming life's challenges requires constant sacrifice. You can't beat what's bothering you without working hard. But life is short, and there are only so many hours in a day, so make sure you're spending them where you really want to be. Gymnastics was my passion, but every hour I was in the gym was an hour that I wasn't spending with my friends and family. I could have been at the movies or the beach or at birthday parties, which I miss so many of. I sacrificed all this and more in pursuit of my dream. So when you go out to crush your own challenges, whatever they are, just know that at some point, you'll have to make decisions, sometimes painful ones, about where you want to spend your time and energy. And third, you've got to be resilient. You've got to be tough. And you've got to always believe. Life is always going to throw you curveballs. It's how you choose to deal with them that defines you. If you allow yourself to become the victim and blame others every time something bad happens to you, then your challenges will always beat you. But if you stay focused on your goals, stay positive, your ability to defeat those challenges goes way up. Life isn't always a fairy, a fairy tale story with a fairy tale ending. I mean, just look at me. It's full of twists and turns, ups and downs. You've got to be able to roll with the punches and keep the negative thoughts out of your mind. Hey, I was this close to being an Olympian. And I never made it. But looking back and all things considered, that's OK with me. Congratulations, everybody, for being here today. What an honor. Such a great achievement. Good luck to all of you. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Ariana. That was truly inspirational, and I know that our 2017 scholars really appreciate that. Probably their parents do as well. You've given us all a lot to think about in terms of never giving up on your dreams or yourself. On a side note, last year our speaker arrived hanging from the side of a helicopter out the window there, and we considered setting up mats here to ask if you'd do a full out, but. <laughs> Sadly, there are so many scholars here tonight, we didn't have the room. And now we will move into the scholarship portion of our program. Tonight's presentation of awards would not have been possible without the efforts of our scholarship selection committee. From our foundation staff, Tony, of course, Penne, we have Will Donnelly, Rebecca Harding, Colleen Hill, and Ruben Logo. Thank you all for helping out. Applause 
in addition, we have a couple of our community representatives here, um, two of which have served on our committee for many years, and we are very, very grateful. Cheryl Caudry and J.P. Lake. Thank you. We are also pleased this evening to have two of our 2016 scholars joining us. Please stand to be recognized. Brian Jeffers and Supreet Shah, who I guess is not here, and Maite Alonso. Maite goes to Georgetown University, and Brian is at UC Berkeley. So you're both done for the summer. It's great. These students and thousands of other Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation scholars sat where you sit tonight. Bright young leaders, driven to advance yourselves, your families, and your community. Scholars, tonight we celebrate your accomplishments. But before we recognize you, I would like to acknowledge the family, friends, teachers, and school administrators who have encouraged and supported you throughout your education. Parents, teachers, counselors, principals, superintendents, and other guests, would you please stand so we can honor you? And students, before you go off to college, please remember to thank all of those people at least once. Your efforts to make this day a reality for our scholars cannot be underestimated. To emphasize the important role that our school administrators play in building awareness for this program, we are pleased to award a $100 Staples gift card to the school that boasts the greatest percentage increase in applicants this year over last year. This year, that distinction goes to Santa Paula High School Principal Garcia. We invite you to come up and receive Now it is my pleasure to introduce to you our 2017 Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation Scholars Program semifinalists. I will read the names of our semifinalists alphabetically by school. Students, when I call the name of your school, please come quickly to the side of the stage on my right and your left and line up in alphabetical order. See Rebecca over here with her hand raised? You should head that direction. We will start with the applicants from Adolfo Camarillo High School, so you should be heading that direction right now. The applicants from Buena High School, Channel Islands High School, El Camino High School, Foothill Technology, and Grace Brethren High School should also begin lining up. As I announce your name, please walk up onto the stage to receive a small gift for participating in our scholarship program. Parents, we do have a professional photographer here, but you are more than welcome to come closer to the stage as your child is presented with their gift. Every student will also receive a Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation Scholars Program Certificate of Distinction, which you can pick up during dinner. I would just ask that you be respectful of each of our scholars and remain quiet while they are recognized, but we like clapping, so don't hesitate to honor them. And now to begin, from Adolfo Camarillo High School. And I might mention this is practice for graduation, so we're going to see how you all do. <laughs> from Adolfo Camarillo High School, we have Bryce Dearden. <laughs> Bryn Kirksey. Alexander Lee. Michelle Liu. Avinash Nandakumar. Athena Caduce, Paige Robinson, and Helen Zhang. From Buena High School, Lily Christensen, Karina Martinez, and Sarah Siddons. Applicants from Moore Park High School and Newberry Park High School, you should begin lining up over here. 
And now from Channel Islands High School, Gladys Ortiz Perez and Devin Romines. From El Camino High School, Midori Wipaya Renbarger. From Foothill Technology High School, we have Mallory Kinnan. Emma Kolesnik. John Marku. Evan Soma. Gabrielle Sones and Arden Tanner. From Grace Brethren High School, Hannah Nandor, Autumn Pfeiffer, Chloe Richardson, Harrison Rood, and Madison Weaver. Applicants from Nordoff High School, Oak Park High School, Oaks Christian High School, and Rio Mesa High School should begin to line up. From Moore Park High School, we have Michael Bennington, Elise Gillis-Smith, Kanika Julia, Bryce McEwen, Rashmika Ramesh, and Gavin Williams. From Newberry Park High School, Rachel Brown, Jordan Jomsky, Victoria Wan, Raina Kanapuram, Justin Kawaguchi, Liam Lekka, Maria Luciani, Nicholas Nagamoto, Odisea Perinis, Andrew Reddy, Andrew Santoso, Emily Takeda, Akash Velu, and Benjamin Yang. From Nordoff High School, Kirsten Hodge and Sarah Scott. Royal High School students, St. Augustine Academy, Santa Clara High School, Santa Paula High School, Santa Susana High School, and Thousand Oaks High School, please line up. And now from Oak Park High School, we have Nicholas Burt, William Carter, Stephanie Chang, Paige Creason, Rachel Hu, Rathik Kumar, and Deborah Ong. From Oaks Christian High School, Shea Aguilar, Caitlin Lee, William Sadowski, Tatum Shore, and Samantha Spear. From Rio Mesa High School, Mia Hammernick, Jordan Harbor, and Kinley Zart Tenzin. So students from Trinity Pacific Christian, Ventura High School, Villanova Prep, Westlake High School, and our homeschool applicants, please line up. Now from Royal High School, we have Mark Kaneshiro, Parker Nolan, and Stephanie Russo. From St. Augustine Academy, Liam O'Kane. From Santa Clara High School, Lourdes Albia, and Mercedes Ruiz. From Santa Paula High School, Larry Renteria Luna, and Morel Vargas. 
From Santa Susana High School, Ravi Amin. And Prachi Patel. From Thousand Oaks High School, Andrew Chow. Peter Liu. And Shannon O'Shea. From Trinity Christian Pacific School, Lena Pachifachi. From Ventura High School, Tristan Anderson. Chloe Bergen. Kayla Auerbacher. And Kayla Tugneri. From Villanova Prep, Fabio Loretta and Dominique Salapare. From Westlake High School, April Ball, Alisa Lee, Jerry Song, and Allison Weisenfeld. And finally, please welcome our homeschool applicant, Tessa Coker. Makes me feel good when there's nobody left over there and I haven't missed a name. Congratulations to each of you. I also want to note that 10 students from Lorena High School and one student from the Thatcher School were selected as semifinalists. But those schools unfortunately had conflicts this evening and the students weren't able to join us. Among these semifinalists, tonight we are privileged to award 13 with scholarships totaling $50,000 to help them pursue their college education. Before we announce this year's recipients, I have one very special acknowledgement to make. There is one semifinalist among us who has excelled tremendously in leadership and service, but will not be receiving an award this evening. That is because he has already been named a recipient of our national scholarship, the GE Reagan's Presidential Foundation Scholarship Program. Following in the footsteps of his sister, this Newberry Park High School scholar is among 20 students from across the country who will receive up to $40,000 in college scholarships. He will be formally recognized this summer, but we would be remiss if we didn't acknowledge his achievements in some way tonight. Please join me in congratulating Odisea Perinis. And if you'll join me up here, Odisea, we have a small token for you. The plaque that he received was one of Ronald Reagan's favorites. It could be found on his desk in the Oval Office. There is no limit to what a man can do or where he can go, as long as he doesn't mind who gets the credit. And that describes Odyssea perfectly. And now on to tonight's awards. When I call your name, please come up to the stage on my right. Again, the same path that you used before. Our first award is a special commendation we are calling the It Can Be Done Award, and it includes a $1,000 scholarship. This scholar athlete holds leadership positions in student government and on the athletic fields, all the while maintaining a 4.5 GPA. Lauded for humility, honesty, and leadership, this student is said to be an inspiration to both fellow students and teachers. We are especially proud of this student because of an idea that was sparked during her time at our summer leadership program. This outstanding young philanthropist brought together multiple community resources to create a systemic program that offers free showers for homeless people every Saturday morning. Unfortunately, we just learned that she cannot be here tonight, but we want to honor Iris Perez from Santa Paula High School, who has plans to study nursing at Cal State Channel Islands this fall. Please welcome her mother, Jessica Perez, to the stage. Thank you. 
Our next two awards are for scholarships of $2,500 each. And our first recipient is a camp counselor and an experienced equestrian. The student's passion for environmental issues is extensive and resulted in the founding of two organizations, the Environmental Justice Club and Jungle Heroes. A school administrator recalls that this student's passion for learning is, quote, rooted in the desire to do good in this world. For this, the student is most proud of her efforts leading a confidential LGBT group at school, mentoring younger students, and fostering a more understanding community. She plans to study at Franklin Olin College of Engineering in the fall. From the Thatcher School, please congratulate Emma Friedman. And as previous, yes. As previously mentioned, Thatcher is on a school-wide trip this week, so I would like to invite Emma's mother, Patty, to the stage to accept her daughter's award. Okay, the next student is in the room. <laughs> a teacher describes our next recipient of a $2,500 scholarship as principled and gracious. Okay, that's all of you. That doesn't give any clues. The student can be seen leading within the student government, the key club, and future business leaders of America. A member of the National Honor Society with a 4.5 GPA and of the volleyball team, this recipient also spends countless hours as a volunteer for the Boys and Girls Club. A future journalist, he has already spent time as a TV news anchor and a TEDx youth speaker. This Newberry Park senior will travel to Northwestern University in the fall. Please welcome to the stage, Liam Lecca. Our next awards are for a $3,500 Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation Scholarship. For our first recipient, high school was marked with countless hours serving the Kiwanis and Key Clubs. In addition to service, this student is a true triple threat, balancing academics, National Honor Society, with athletics, track and field and cross country, and music, award-winning oboe player. Mm, that narrowed it down. Curious by nature, as pointed out by a teacher, this student excels in math and science and won second place in the Ventura County Science Fair. An Eagle Scout from Ventura High School, this student will make our nation proud as he heads to the United States Naval Academy in the fall. Congratulations, Tristan Anderson. This next $3,500 recipient follows President Reagan's mantra that, quote, we can't help everyone, but everyone can help someone. This credo is evident through the student's unique work as director of a program that pairs teens with Holocaust survivors. This recipient's resume on and off campus is extensive. Student government, theater, music, writing, volleyball, and more. A future sociologist, this student already has tested out college waters as a research assistant at Cal Lutheran and a clinical assistant at UC Santa Barbara. This time our recipient is a Girl Scout Gold Star recipient from Westlake High School. Congratulations to April Ball who will attend Stanford University in the fall. Our next recipient for $3,500, 
desires not just to lead like President Reagan, but also to live like him. Optimistic, determined, and an effective communicator. We believe this student has succeeded through leadership and service at school and in his community. Ooh, his? Wrong. Could be his. <laughs> this recipient is a varsity swimmer and a member of the debate team, member of Interact Club and the Theater Club, a member of the Thousand Oaks Youth Commission. She is also a Girl Scout Gold Star recipient. We are quite proud that she is an alumnus of programs here at the library, including our Summer Leadership Program and Women's Leadership Summit, not to mention her role here as a docent. This Lorena graduate will attend the University of Pennsylvania in the fall. Congratulations to Juliana Emanuel. And as previously mentioned, <laughs> unfortunately, Juliana is at Lorena this evening for one of their own programs. So we congratulate her and we will get her her award. Another Kiwanis and Key Club veteran, this next recipient is class president, vice president of Future Business Leaders of America, and secretary of student government. Academically, this student is beyond the typical high school senior. Well, you all are. Particularly in the sciences, and has demonstrated that affinity as an officer of health occupations students of America. That narrowed it down. Founder of the Japanese Culture Club and co-president of the Junior Youth Buddhist Association, one counselor describes him as one of the most likable students with whom she has ever worked. A Newberry Park Eagle Scout, this student will study human sciences at the University of Southern California this fall. Please welcome Justin Kawaguchi. Our next recipient of a $3,500 award has overcome learning challenges to become one of the foremost leaders at school and an active contributor in the community. As captain of the water polo team and relay team leader for the swim team, this student turned a passion for the water into service, participating in efforts like Heal the Bay and Coastal Cleanup. This recipient's other passions resulted in an organization called the College Safety Education Program to impart self-defense skills for young women. Believe it or not, we are recognizing another Girl Scout Gold Star recipient. Folks from Thousand Oaks High School, this student will attend the University of California, San Diego in the fall. Congratulations to Shannon O'Shea. A communicator by nature, this next $3,500 recipient is an award-winning leader and speaker. President of Future Business Leaders of America and the Key Club, this student also is active in Girls State, well, that gave it away, National Honor Society, and Cross Country. This student received a Spirit of Community Award for founding an initiative called Friends for Patients. Among her quite unique accolades, she was a Miss Teen Moore Park Princess and an inaugural TEDx speaker. Resilient and responsible, this student is a problem solver and demonstrated those qualities never more than when her family faced difficulties. This Moore Park High School senior will attend the University of California, Berkeley in the fall. Please welcome to the stage, Rashmika Ramesh.
Our final $3,500 award recipient is immersed in activities and volunteer roles that highlight the arts and the written word. The student is an award-winning poet, library volunteer, leader in church music ministry, lead in the drama department, member of the creative writing club, yearbook editor, and newspaper co-editor. At school, the student volunteers for the Interact Club, the Environmental Club, and Campus Ministry, as well as being a peer tutor and school ambassador. This class president is a dedicated and revered volunteer for her school's summer academy, making substantive contributions for her peers. From Villanova Prep, this student also will attend the University of California at Berkeley in the fall. Congratulations, Dominique Salapare. That enthusiasm is why she's an award winner. Our next two awards are for a $5,500 scholarship each, plus an additional $500 grant for a teacher of the recipient's choice. The first recipient of a $5,500 award is a scholar athlete who attributes success in leadership to grit and determination. One teacher calls this student strength as a leader among the best he has seen in 10 years and this is frequently on display as Associated Student Body Officer. He's Captain, whoops, it's not a he, or it could be a he. <laughs> captain of the Varsity Cross Country and Varsity Track and Field teams, this recipient translates leadership to the athletic fields. Finally, service is a continual thread in this student's high school career, serving as president of the Peer Counseling Club and participating in a number of local, national, and international service efforts. From Oak Park High School, this senior will attend the University of Southern California in the fall. Congratulations, Paige Creason. Our second $5,500 award recipient is Treasurer of Junior State of America and an award-winning member of National Honor Society for Service. President of the California Scholarship Federation, this recipient also was an intern for a local municipality. Combining athletics with academics, this student also served on the league champion varsity tennis team. Most notably, this student is driven by passion and use personal talents and interest to serve the community. An award-winning pianist, this student raised funds for keyboards and taught free weekly piano lessons to students at a local homeless shelter. Adolfo Camarillo's Michelle Leo is this recipient. We're told she's heading to the University of California at Berkeley in the fall. Congratulations. Our final award is for a $7,000 scholarship plus an additional $500 grant for a teacher of his or her choice. This recipient's resume is, well, mind-boggling. Captain of the speech and debate team, vice president of Future Business Leaders of America, and secretary of the American Computer Science League are just the start. Service efforts have ranged from a position as middle school debate coach to organizing a host of community events supporting worthy causes. A dancer and musician, 
This student is concert master for the orchestra, president of the Strings Club, campaign manager for a dance group, raising $30,000, by the way, and an accomplished guitarist for Indian classical music. Finally, she is co-founder and president of the Girls Who Code Club and co-founder and secretary of Code Nation. This Newberry Park standout will attend the UC Berkeley in the fall. Please join me in congratulating Raina Kanapuram. I'd like to give one more round of applause to all of these scholars. They made it very difficult this year.